Hello, good people of YouTube. Mountbatten here. And today we're going to be talking about a lot of changes coming to quite a few ships uh, in the next patch. All this information is straight from the World of Warships Develop blog Facebook page if you want to be among the first to know about these changes and new ships and stuff. Be sure to follow them there. And I'm, again, I'm just going to read straight off of the post on Facebook. So this was yesterday. Um, so when you when you guys are getting this, this is two days after. I do apologize, but you know I have a bunch of stuff to work on, and then this stuff kind of gets left behind. But anyway, here we go. Uh, PT European destroyers, torpedoes, and balance changes. Please note that all information in the development blog is preliminary and is subject to change during testing. Showcase features may or may not end up on the main server. Any final information will be published on our game's website. The base torpedo modules of tier 5 to 9 researchable European destroyers will become researchable. The new base torpedo module parameters for each ship will be equal to those of the researchable torpedo module of the previous tier destroyer. In case you already have one of these European destroyers in port, the researchable torpedo module will, be, will already be mounted on the ship and the base module will be moved to the inventory. This change will make the advancement of European destroyers torpedoes consecutive like with other nations torpedo destroyers. In the second stage of our public testing for update uh, .9.3, we changed the characteristics of several ships, having analyzed their combat performance and taken player feedback into account. Such changes were required in order to carefully adjust the balance of selected warships. We'll continue to introduce changes in the updates that will follow if deemed necessary. Okay, going back to that first uh, couple of paragraphs. So, um, with the European destroyers, they are, it sounds like, and for what, if this is how I understand it, the last researchable torpedo module on let's say the tier 5 pan-european destroyer that's going to be the base module on the tier 6 pan-european destroyer and then you have the actual module that you have now if you have early access to the ship so if you got them through the event then that module will be the upgraded torpedo module okay I mean that makes sense because they do have pretty good torpedoes uh, for their tier and for their range um, why they didn't introduce that when they were designing and testing the ships before they put them on early access, I don't know. But if you already have those ships with those modules, you will get the upgraded module for free. So no big deal if you already have them. And if you are planning on grinding them, I mean, a module is what, 15,000 XP, 20,000 XP when you get up to top tier? It's not too, too bad. But I, I really don't see why they didn't catch that in testing. I don't know. So let's go on to the other ships. Soviet Cruiser Aurora Tier 3. Turret traverse speed increased from 5.1 to 5.3 degrees per second. Okay. <laughs> That's, that seems really, really random. British Destroyer Valkyrie Tier 3. Main battery load time increased from 5.2 to 5.4 seconds. Torpedo tubes reload time increased from 43 to 45 seconds. So a 20th of a second increase on her reload on our main battery reload and a two second increase on our torpedo tube reload. British Battleship Orion Tier 4, base of main battery firing range reduced from 14.7 to 14.4 kilometers. Again, really random changes. British Cruiser Hawkins Tier 5, main battery reload time reduced from 14 to 13.5 seconds. Turret firing angles were increased of the first turret by 32 degrees for short ranges of the second turret by 2 degrees, of the third and fourth turrets by 5 degrees, of the sixth turret by 36 degrees for long range. Okay. American Cruise Atlanta, Tier 7. Main battery reload time reduced from 4.9 to 4.8 seconds. Um, British Destroyer Jutland, Tier 9. Main battery reload time increased from 4.1 to 4.2. Torpedo tubes reload time increased from 122 to 124 seconds. British Destroyer Daring, Tier 10. Main battery reload time increased from 2.6 to 2.7. Torpedo tubes reload time increased from 122 to 124 seconds. Japanese Aircraft Carry Hakuru, Tier 10. Maximum rocket damage reduced from 3,250 uh, 3, to 3,150. Chance of a rocket causing fire reduced from 15 to 14%. French Cruiser Colbert, Tier 10. Main battery reload time reduced from 3.5 to 3.4 seconds. Restoration of hit points by repair consumables increased from uh, half a percent to 0.66% of total hit points per second. That's interesting. 
So we have Battleship Kremlin, Tier 10. Continuous A, damage reduced from 433 to 412. Number of explosions in a salvo reduced from 10 to 9. Damage by shell explosions reduced from 1820 to 1750. American Cruiser Pensacola, Tier 6, for an aft and armor plating increased from 16 to 25 millimeters. Not like that's going to keep it from exploding much more. American Cruiser New Orleans, Tier 7, for an aft and armor plating increased from 16 to 25 millimeters. German Cruiser York, Tier 7, for an aft and armor plating increased from 16 to 25 millimeters. Aircraft spotting range of all planes reduced from 18 to 17 kilometers. Characteristic determines at what distance the aircraft is capable of spotting an enemy. So, some interesting changes, uh, coupled in with a lot of smaller changes. Now, the Atlanta. Um, interesting that they reduced the Atlanta's fire rate, but not the Flint. That is very interesting. And I, and I don't know if, like... Because last, last time we had one of these um, patches with a bunch of minor changes, the Atlanta and Flint were, they had the same thing changed. But Atlanta, I, I, I don't know, that's interesting. I guess Flint's just getting shafted, maybe because it still has radar. Uh, not radar, because uh, it still has a smoke screen. Now, Atlanta got hit hard with the IFHE rework. So... This I can see them as a way of kind of compensating Atlanta captains because yes, they did lose um, they, they did lose a, a lot of their damage potential, but a 0.1 second decrease so a tenth of a second decrease on the reload time This probably isn't enough. Maybe like a half a second um, Decrease on the reload time would be more appropriate and they could be working toward that Because um, they've been doing this for the past I think three or four patches They've been doing very small, very minute changes rather than changing everything at once. And like I said last time, I think that I think that I think this is a good thing that they're taking it slow rather than just you know throwing something to one side after it was on another side. So for example, um, let's say they they decrease the Atlanta's reload time from 4.9 seconds to 3.9 seconds. That's a that's a huge increase in reload time. And now they're just kind of ticking it down a little bit at a time to kind of find, you know, a good place to stop rather than going too far and having to go back like we saw again with the carrier rework. Carriers went from hand of God to utterly useless, one hot fix to, to, uh, to another because they were just sweeping uh, values and damage values and this and that back. It was crazy. Those of you that, that, that were there remember that. Um, so the Kremlin. Again, I do these videos mostly because of the Kremlin and them actually nerfing it. So, they nerfed the AA again. So, I don't really have a problem with Kremlin's AA. When, it, when even at 100 AA, I, that wasn't really my problem with Kremlin. Now, since they nerfed Kr Kremlin Sigma last time, I've noticed that it's not as good as it was at its maximum range because you could still at like max range in the Kremlin still like tack drive on ships which you shouldn't be able to do now I'm not sure if they've thrown a switch or something uh, that kind of gives Kremlin worse RNG but recently as in the past couple of weeks I've noticed with Kremlin I'm getting a lot more of those wonky dispersions and by wonky I mean like your shell is just absolutely shotgun now you're seeing some in this video, and I'm, and again, in this video, I'm not sure if it's, because there's a thunderstorm front, but, you know, it shouldn't decrease the dispersion that much to where the shells are literally shotgunning around the ship that I'm shooting at. And the thing is, most of these shots that you'll see in this clip that's playing right now, they're from within Kremlin's 15 kilometer sweet zone. Most of them are around 11 kilometers. When the shell should be absolutely railguns, because that's how Kremlin's supposed to work. And again, I'm not sure if they if they've thrown a switch uh, over at Wargaming HQ that's decreased the Kremlin's RNG or what. But I, I've been getting a lot more of these salvos. Well, whereas before it was just tack driving, tack driving, tack driving, tack driving, and the shells would go right where I wanted them to go with beautiful dispersion. No, it's not a bad thing, because as you see in this video, I still do very well in this game. 
So again, I'm not. I'm just saying that maybe they've done something kind of a, a, a stealth nerf that we don't know about that they've done behind the scenes to make Kremlin more in line with the randomness of other battleships. But it's a lot less consistent than it used to be. And this AA nerf, it's better than the last AA nerf because in this AA nerf they actually are nerfing the AA rather than the health of the AA. So that's going to make Kremlin more vulnerable to uh, aircraft carriers and such. But it's not a big nerf, again, but if you pile all the things that have happened to Kremlin, all the nerf that has happened over the past couple of months, it's actually a kind of a, of a substantial nerf. Her AA health has been decreased, her Sigma has been decreased by 0.2, and now her AA uh, damage has been decreased twice already. So that's over these three months it's quite a substantial nerf to Kremlin and it's still very strong and again are they really nerfing what needs to be nerfed is the AA nerf going to help the sh uh, help the game balance P maybe probably so because now high tier carriers will be a little bit more uh, inclined to attack it whereas before it was you know just straight up you just avoided it altogether unless you absolutely had to because now her AA mounts can be destroyed much easier her AA is doing less damage overall and it still has strong AA, don't get me wrong. Well, it still will have strong AA. But it opens it up to being attacked by carriers much more than it was in its original state. But the things that I would like to see nerfed about it, the turret traverse, that's still the main issue. Because you have a ship that's massive, that's well armored. And its downside is supposed to be, yes, it's huge, it's well armored, it has awesome guns. But the turrets could go from one side of the ship to the other in 30 seconds. So quicker than the guns can reload, you can traverse the turrets. Which, that again negates the penalty of having a big armored ship that's slow to maneuver. Because it doesn't matter because the turrets can turn faster than any other tier 10's turrets can, uh, tier 10 battleships turrets can. So, that's still, at like a 1 or 2 second decrease in the turret rotation time, that would put the Kremlin more in line with a well-balanced ship than what it is now in my opinion. But I don't know if they'll nerf that. They seem to be really focused on the AA and the Sigma of the guns rather than the turret traverse, uh, traverse speed. So I don't know. But that's the Kremlin now. So if you add up all these all these nerfs, it's actually a substantial nerf, substantial nerf, like I said. And all these other ships, lots of little changes again. Kind of insignificant changes in their different ships this time rather than the ones that they've been constantly nerfing. And the Pensacola buff, that's kind of funny. Um, but... That's happening. I guess it kind of got looked over in the IFHE rework, and now they're realizing that it needed that armor buff it in the New Orleans too. So those are the changes coming to the game in the next patch, which, when you see this, is only nine days away or so. But anyway, guys, if you enjoyed the video, drop a like, leave a comment, and subscribe. We're on our way to 10,000 subscribers, and we are almost to our halfway point. I cannot thank you guys enough for that. Hope you're all staying healthy and staying sanitized and having a wonderful Saturday. And I hope to catch all of you guys in the next one.